Welcome back to part two of our video series of how to set up the Zeiss Victory RF range finding binoculars. Part one, we took a look at the most basic functions and getting that part set up first. So now we are gonna take a look and a deep dive into how to set up the ballistic profiles and a lot of the display functions in these range finding binoculars. There's a ton of options in here. A lot of ways you can customize what you see and how the rangefinder functions. So we're gonna dive into all that in detail in this video. Um, as always, we really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Put links to that down in the description as well as a link to our website, backwardspursuit.com. A lot of gear reviews over there to go check out. And a link to the Victory RF if you want to check them out for yourself. Let's dive into how to set these guys up and get the most out of them. So to get started setting up the Zeiss Victory RF rangefinding binoculars, there is a couple ways you can do this. One being through the unit itself, and that does work. Go ahead and hold down the setting button like we did to go through the different modes in the other video. Hold that down for three seconds and then you can cycle through the different options. Select what you want with the fire button and you'll be able to move through the menu that way. That does certainly work, but it is more cumbersome than utilizing the Zeiss app. I'd recommend doing that. So uh, first thing I'm gonna go ahead and do is download the Zeiss app. If you haven't done so, I'd recommend doing that and then we'll be able to go ahead and get through this a lot easier and make any changes and adjustments to this unit doing that. So download the Zeiss app, and once you've done that, you are going to be able to see uh, this when you open up the Zeiss, uh, the, the Zeiss app. You have to create an account. I've already done that, so I won't go through that, but pretty simple, just create your own Zeiss account. Then we're gonna go ahead and click on the, little, the three dots in the upper left-hand corner and go to Connected Products. So you're gonna see a couple of options here that you can connect to this unit. So you wanna go over to the Victory RF, which is this unit here. Now to get the unit prepared to pair with the app, you're gonna hold down the settings button for approximately eight seconds. So holding that down for eight seconds, then what you're gonna see is in the unit here in the display, you're gonna see the Bluetooth signal come on and you know it's ready to pair with the app. So once that is done, then you're gonna hit the connect button here and it's gonna to wanna to connect to the app. Now keep in mind you do have to have the, the, uh, the location on, it likes to have that on. And then once you turn those on, it, it pairs really quick and easy. And now at this point, it is paired with the unit. So we're able to make changes on the app and then we'll show you how to sync that to the unit here in a bit. But before we do anything else, we wanna make sure that the units of measurement on the app are the same as the units of measurement that we're gonna be using throughout our setup here in the RF. So we're gonna go back, uh, hit that top back button there and then hit the three drop down buttons there. And on the bottom there, you're gonna see settings. Here it's gonna come from the factory as a metric, so if you wanna change that to Imperial, this is where you're gonna do that. I'm gonna change it to Imperial because I'm here in the States and prefer that. And so now we have Imperial. Now this is critical because if we have this set up differently, if we set Imperial here and then set up uh, metric within the unit, which we'll look at here a little bit later, then it's gonna uh, create a conflict in the unit of measurement that it spits out. It can cause an incorrect reading for you and, and cause you some, some problems there. So I wanna set that to the units that you're gonna be using for the rest of this setup. So I'm gonna set this into Imperial. Then we're gonna go back to our connected products here, select the Victory RF, and we're ready to move on to the next step. So as you can see here on the, uh, we're dealing with the, the Victory RF unit and the number one, the device settings here, you've got a couple of things you can work on. You've got ballistics here, and these are the standard ballistic profiles that come with this unit. And then you also have the result, the display. So you can change what you see with the unit by uh, making a change here. Uh, we'll go through that in just a second. And then you've got different settings here. If you wanna change the default here, like in the other video we mentioned, if you're in the US here and you wanna change to Imperial, you're gonna go ahead and change this from meters to yards and inches. That's gonna be one of the primary things you wanna do initially if you have a preference one way or the other. Target mode here in this is gonna be best target or last target. We talked about that last time. Pretty easy to change. I like to leave it on best target. Uh, the button orientation we talked about in the last one, you can change this as well uh, through the, the app. Uh, you can have the factory settings, which is right-handed, or if you wanna do the reverse settings, that's gonna be a left-handed setup. I'm right-handed, so I'm gonna go ahead and leave that on the factory settings. Um, now there's a number of different ballistic profiles here that are available in this, and there's nine of them that you can have in here, and we'll go through later how to set up your own ballistic profile for your specific uh, rifle, but that's where you'll set that up. And then here 
is again a display option for what you want displayed in the unit. We'll go through that in a minute. And so back up to the main menu and then here usage data, that's going to give you a number of recent ranges that you've used and ranged uh, so you can go through some of your historical data there. So kind of cool that way. So that'll load in there. So let's start with the results display. Uh, this is something that is really uh, personal preference for what you're going to be using this for. And so you can have, set, there, there are seven default configurations that you can choose from in this unit. A default one or display one, and th this is where for me it's a lot easier to use this, uh, the app than through the unit itself because in the unit it just says DI1 or DI2. So you have to remember what that is and it's a lot easier because it, it describes that in the app here. So this is one of the reasons why I like this better. Uh, so if you want just the range to display, you will select display one. Display two is your range and your angle. So if you want the, the angle in a percentage, uh, the display three, which is used a lot for archery hunters, um, is you're gonna have the, the line of sight range and then the equivalent horizontal distance. So you're gonna have your angle adjusted range there. That's super useful. Now, when you get into displays four through seven, those are your typically your rifle settings. So if you're going to be inputting a certain ballistic data in here, this is where you're gonna see say display uh, five is gonna be your line of sight range and then your horizontal or holdover MOA uh, for display five. So it's gonna tell you in MOAs, your holdover for your ballistic data, whatever you have synced with this. You can do that in mills, of course, or display seven, you can have your range and then your cl click correction. So if you have 17 clicks, whether you're in MOA or mill, uh, you'll set that up separately. Um, that's gonna go ahead and allow you to select that. So. Um, and then you can also uh, display four, go in, in centimeters or inches as far as your holdover. So a lot of options there. One of the cool things about this is that you can add your own configuration by uh, clicking add configuration. Now the range there is your, your range in meters there as it's displayed. This is just a sample of what it would be. So you can add, let's say you want to add your equivalent horizontal distance if you're archery hunting or something like that, and it'll, t it'll add that in. And then if you can also add in, let's say, I wanted to have my, my holdover in MOA, it'll tell me that as well. So 10.1 is my holdover. This is just a sample. There's no particular uh, uh, ballistic profile attached to this yet, but that's how that would work. So if you like that, you like your setup, you hit add, and you can go ahead and display that DIU1. That's your custom configuration for how you like it. So once you're done there, you can go back from your results display and you've set up everything that you may want in, in your results display for the rangefinder. So that's an awesome, awesome configurations you can make to that. So next in the settings tab here, you can adjust the brightness, number one here, to whatever brightness you like. Um, I like brightness seven, so that's what I had set it to, but each of these brightnesses, keep in mind, are adaptive or an adaptive display, so they will change uh, a little bit with the outside light. So you're not gonna be stuck with just a brightness of seven. It, that's the baseline brightness and then adjust up or down based on the, the outside lighting. So you can go all the way to 11 or whatnot, but I'm gonna keep mine at seven. I like it right at seven. This has worked really well for me. So stay there. Units here, yards and yards and inches or meters and centimeters. I'm gonna go with yards and inches. Best target, I'm gonna go with, uh, is, that's the one I've found to work to my liking the best, but you can also use last target there and select that. Your button orientation, factory or reverse. Here's another shortcut to that ballistics uh, profile page. So you can uh, click that here and it'll take you to the ballistic page. And then here's the result again, what well, we just went through. So another shortcut to that through the settings uh, section. Now we're gonna go back to the ballistics. And this is where we can go ahead and add a specific uh, gun profile or a, a load profile or whatnot. This basically, when you hit add profile here, it just adds or pulls in profiles that you've already created through another screen. And I'll show you where you can create those now. So if you back out of that, back out of the ballistics and back out one more time into the prime or the primary menu here, hit the drop down there and you'll click on ballistics right there. And then you'll see any of the ballistics that or the ballistic profiles that you have created, created a few loads for the, the 708, one for the seven rim mag, uh, and then one for the 243 and still have some more I'm working on. Now, if you wanted to add a new group, which you probably would want to when you're getting this first set up, you're gonna go ahead and hit this yellow plus sign. Uh, but before I do that, I wanna mention one other quick thing. 
go back to the screen and hit the main menu button, go click on my products, and you're going to, uh, you can go ahead and add a new scope for whatever rifle uh, you've, you're going to be building the, the, the ballistics out for. So in this, if you want to add a new rifle here, uh, you can add a new a scope here and you can choose from a, a number of brands here and it'll, it's nice that they've got other options, not just the Zeiss scopes. And so you can go select that and then add that as a new product. Uh, so once you do that though, you're going to go back to our, um, my ballistics setting there and we're going to go in here and add a new ballistic group. So once we add this here, let's say I want to build out a new load for my 708. You can go ahead and do that and you can name it whatever you want. And here under your rifle scopes where we just were, you're going to go ahead and select whatever you want to put on that. So for this one, I have the, the Zeiss uh, Conquest V4, but if I didn't, I'd select that. And then I'd go choose from one of the scopes that I added in that other screen. Let's say I wanted to put the Tractoric, put that guy on there, then that would be the scope on there. But in this case, I, I'm not going to use that. I'm going to use the Zeiss Victory, I'm sorry, Conquest V4, that guy right there. So that'll be my Zeiss scope for this project. And then sight height, you want to go ahead and measure that. Put that at 175. That's, I know on this particular gun, that's the sight height. I measured it from the center of the bore to the center of the optic. So that is where that one is at. And then select which reticle your scope has. If it's a Zeiss reticle, then it's pretty easy to find that out. Uh, now under the ammunition tab, you can either enter a factory load if you're going to be shooting factory loads and you would just choose your brand, whatever you're going to add in there and then find your load data. So then put in brand and then the caliber and then the bullet. Now if you're hand loading, which is what I do, uh, I'm going to go ahead and select, uh, let's say, uh, uh, something else that I'm going to be building here. Let's recreate that, that ELDX load that, that I created. So in this, um, the 284 is the caliber and the bullet that I put on here is the 150 grain uh, ELDX and so that's going to be what, what I created there, what the load that I developed. Uh, so it adds that there. Muzzle velocity on this load is at 2800 feet per second. I've already tested that out and know that. And then the ballistic coefficient there, you can either manually change that, it does pull it in there. But uh, the, the BC on this is I believe 0.57 if I remember correctly. Uh, but it'll, if you want to calculate that, then you can, you can do that a different uh, manually as well. So uh, that will pull that information in there and then you hit continue. This is where it's going to pull in the, the temperature if you're connected to Bluetooth like, and uh, you're to the satellites like you should be. And when you're setting this up, then it's going to take into account the, the outside temperature when it's throwing the ballistics table to you. Now you can change this manually, but if you do that, it's going to override that. And so it may not pull in the, the outside temperatures later on. So I would recommend not to change in that unless you are intentionally wanting to do that. Uh, so go ahead and leave that, leave that the way that is. Hit save profile. All right, now once you're at this screen, you can see that uh, you have some options here of what you can change here. Now it defaults to the maximum magnification. Uh, as far as for the subtensions sub in the reticle. So 24X, you can see what your different uh, the yardages are for the different subtensions. And then if you move that back to 6X, you're going to have different subtensions, different yardages there. That only applies to a second focal plane scope. Of course, if you have a first focal plane or something else loaded in here, that, that option may not be there. You also have a table here. You can see a, a number of different uh, factors there. You can set that up for a maximum range of 2,000 or 1,000 yards or whatever. You can set up in inches or MOA or mil, have whatever you want displayed here or all of them if you want. And then that, that kind of gives you a lot of options there. And then what incre increments in yardages here, if you want to change that to 50 yards or 100 yards or whatnot, you can do so. So a lot of options that way in what you set up. So really a, a lot of great features here. And what we, once we've got that set up for that ballistic profile, we're going to go back to our connected products, select the Victory RF, and under our ballistics table here, and we're going to add a profile now that we're going to sync the one that we just created. So the one we just created is right there on the top, 708. Now to make sure that that custom profile that we just created is what is displayed in the Victory RF unit when we do this sync process, we have to make sure that that blue star is by the profile that we want. It's currently by BA1, and you can certainly select any of those profiles, one through six. We just created a BAU1, which is the custom profile. 
So to make sure that that is the one that is displayed in the unit when we do the sync, we want to push that uh, blue star, click that blue star by 708. That means that's going to be the default display in the unit here once this sync happens. It's a critical step to make sure that the ballistic profile that we are intending to display in the unit is transferring from here to the unit by clicking that blue star. That makes sure that's the default display in the unit. So once that's done, click the back button here, take us back to the main menu. So now that we have a bunch of settings set up the way that we want this to work down here on the main page uh, under the victory rf you're going to see the option to sync so we're going to see you can either sync the app what we just put in here to the product itself or if you change things on the unit you can sync that to the app so make sure your your uh, range finder is still on which it still is because we've been working on it i want to sync the app to the product so i'm just going to click that and it's going to confirm that you want to do that. It'll overwrite the settings that are currently in the unit. You're going to go ahead and sync that, and it happens very quickly and cleanly. So now you're ready to go, you're ready to use that. Now, if you want to come back in here and change any one of these settings, it's very easy to do. Just go through any of those. You can play around with it, but I certainly would recommend going and setting up your, uh, you know, connect the products that you want. If you have a certain scope onto this section right here, or and or go and set up your ballistic profiles under the ballistic section there and put anything you want in there uh, that you might be wanting to sync to this unit uh, that you might need out in the field. So that is the Zeiss Victory RF, how to set that up using the app. That's by far the easiest way, I think, rather than going through the unit itself, but you can do either way. Uh, there's a ton you can customize to your own liking, so it makes this really useful and you can set it up however you like it. You have a lot of, a lot of functions on a lot of features you can go through. Please drop any questions or comments down in the comments section. We'd love to help you out if we can. Again, I'll put a link to this down in the description for you so you can check it out for yourself. Thanks for watching here today, and we will see you next time.